Hello YouTube, this is the DVT Gator Show, episode 23, part 2. And we're still reviewing Zelda the Phantom Hourglass for Nintendo DS. So let's pick up where I left off. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, you missed quite a bit, so I suggest you watch that one before you watch this one. Let's begin. <coughs> right. I left off after explaining the good stuff about I was, I was on the good stuff about this game. I was just about to talk about the note tool. The note tool is a very good bit of this game. And I really liked it because it helped me get through those dungeons and be able to draw and write things down on the, on the map is really, really useful. This robot outside so I can see where I'm going. So, yep. <coughs> okay. Other good stuff about this game. It's quite a funny game. I mean, there's a character in the game called Lionbeck, who's the captain of the ship that you own. And Lionbeck, he's one of the funniest characters I've ever seen in Zelda. The reason why he's so funny is because he's a big fat wuss. You'll notice throughout the game, all the um, scary tasks that you have to do, that line that never seems to volunteer for, he always seems to stay back and watch the ship. And he just leaves Link to do all the hard work, and line bet hardly does anything. And all the times the game where line bet picks up Link by the neck and starts strangling him are quite funny as well. <laughs> so, line bet's quite a funny character. The cutscenes in the game are very good as well. I really liked them. Uh, let's move on to the next thing on my list. Right. Okay, the next good thing on my list, in the good stuff song, is the sword powers. The sword powers in this game I really, really liked. There are several sword powers in the game. There's the power there's there's one that turns your sword into a fire blade. So it goes so it does double damage to the enemies. There's one that raises your defence so you don't lose much health when you get hit. And there's also one which makes you shoot a sword beam. So they're all pretty good. Okay. Another good thing about this game is the weapons. I really, really like the weapons. Especially the boomerang. The boomerang in this game is really good. Let me just show you it. When you get the boomerang, you can just draw a path for it and it'll go wherever you want it to go. And the path can be infinite. So you can draw a massive long path like this, and the boomerang will follow it without fail. Well, most of the time without fail. So the, the weapons in this game are really, really awesome. Especially, anyone needs the bombs. If you, once you've got a bomb in your hands, if you touch an enemy to throw it at them, this bomb will never miss. So it's more kind of like a hoping bomb. Um, and the other thing is you have to collect bottles to put your potions in, which is kind of nice. Anyway, that's all the good stuff about the game. Now, let's go on to the bad stuff. The bad stuff about about Zelda Phantom Hourglass. There's quite a bit of it, and some of this is being picky, but it's w it's my opinion, really. First things first. Why in the hell can't Link swim? This is the same Link from Wind Waker. You can't tell me that Link forgot how to swim. That is just stupid. In Zelda the Wind Waker, Link could swim. In Zelda Phantom Hourglass, it's the, it's the exact same Link, but he's, a, but he's a tiny bit older. You can't tell me he forgot how to swim. That is just stupid. So that's the first bad thing. Um, the second bad thing is the drawing tool. Now, I'll save this point in the game for a reason. <laughs> when you're in the um, Temple of the Ocean King, you'll come to a door. And to go to the door for the very first time, you have to draw the Phantom Aga symbol. And the door opens every time when you draw a symbol. And it's, it works perfectly. 
Now, let me just show you where the problem is with this drawing tool. It works fine it, when you open the door with the, tra with the um, Fantanaga symbol. But when you end the game, you have to draw the Triforce on the door. Now, drawing the Triforce is, is, is extremely easy. But nine times out of ten, this door will, will not open when you draw the Triforce on it. This really stumped me when I played the game the f very first time through. Eventually, I got it to open, but it took far too many attempts. The drawing tool is ca in this game, it works perfectly most of the time, but for this bit of the game, it's kind of crippled. Okay, all the bad stuff in this game. Some of the bosses are kind of hard. They're not hard because they're extremely strong. They're hard because of, of the way that they're designed. Example, let's go back to the drawing tool again. On the um, big plant boss, you obtain the power to stop time with your phantom sword, which is extremely useful. To stop time, you must draw a figure of eight. Now, when I first fought the phantom boss, I thought my, my game was broken because I, I drew several figure of eights perfectly in it. In, in, in the fashion that the game told me to do. But the, the, well, the time spot to, stop spell hardly ever works. The drawing tool in this game is really, really busted. Beating the eye plant and the um, final boss is extremely difficult due to the drawing tool. It's a little bit easy on the night boss, but on the, uh, on the plant boss it's, it's next to impossible. Okay. Uh, next bad thing. This Zelda game is far too short. There's always seven dungeons, and when I play Zelda games, I like I like to be a few more dungeons. I mean, there's always seven, and one of you have to go through several times. So I, I really like to be I really like to to be a bit more bit longer. Okay. And the other bad thing is that there's no compass in the game. In the in previous Zelda games, there was a there's a tool for getting through dungeons to uh, help you find treasure chests. This tool was a compass, and it was really, really useful. The compass does not appear in this game at all, and I... It really disappoints me that it's not in the game, and I really like that feature in the previous Zelda games. There is a way to find chests. Basically, you talk to these eyeballs in the dungeons and pay them money, to, and they'll tell you where all the chests are. But... I'd rather the compass in than those stupid things, because pay money, you need that money to buy arrows and stuff. Okay. That's basically all the bad stuff I can think of. Anyway, let's go to a rating. Right. The rating for Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I give this game... 3 out of 5. It's pretty good, but it has problems. I mean, quite a lot of people on YouTube think this game is perfect, but I disagree with you. So I give this game a 3 out of 5. My next review will be Sonic Adventure 1 on the um, GameCube, and also it was on the Sega Dreamcast. So, until then, YouTube, bye-bye.